begin to build his own wealth rather than uh, imagining how they'll go back to the village, subdivide their land, and build uh, on a 40 by 50 or 40 by 100 plots. Honorable Speaker, I know I could belabor so many points on this bill, but I want to say this bill, Honorable Speaker, gives us that opportunity that we have all been yearning for. That opportunity not just to provide affordable, decent housing to millions of Kenyans who lack, in line with Article 43 of our Constitution, but an opportunity, Honorable Speaker, more importantly, to create millions of jobs, jobs from engineering, architecture, legal, those in the legal profession, accountants, quantity surveyors, land surveyors, Honorable Speaker, drivers, earth movers, uh, operators, Honorable Speaker, and also to grow our economy in a big way through urbanization. Honorable Speaker, a population of 2,000, 3,000 houses, people coming to be housed in a project of 700 houses, or 1,000 houses that will probably accommodate 3, 4,000 people, that population itself is an opportunity for new markets, Honorable Speaker. It is that urbanization that helps economies grow. It is those opportunities that we must look at. I know there is a temptation, Honorable Speaker, to speak to what is popular to the middle class, to speak to what we think we are speaking to the gallery, to those who have access to our TV stations, Honorable Speaker. It is very tempting, Honorable Speaker, to speak to the less than 10% of our population today who today have a pay slip. But let us have the heart to speak for another close to 40 million Kenyans who have no access to job opportunities today. Those job opportunities lie in this bill, Honorable Speaker. Those job opportunities, Honorable Speaker, outweigh the political expediency that we have seen in those who critic this bill, Honorable Speaker. I am happy, Honorable Speaker, three weeks ago, I listened to our good friend, the former Prime Minister, Honorable Raila Odinga, contend that indeed, in the Azimio Manifesto, they had this levy at 1.5%, Honorable Speaker, contend that it was during his time as Minister for Public Works, Housing and Roads that the ag housing agenda in this country was conceived. Honorable Speaker, I've also had occasion to listen to President William Ruto say that what bedevils our country is one, corruption, vested interests, especially among us to our leadership, Honorable Speaker, and laziness. Honorable Speaker, especially in leadership, we must thank God that today the leadership in this country neither has vested interests in the running and management of government, that the leadership in this country today is determined, Honorable Speaker, to make the tough choices and make the hard decisions that will change this country for good. Part of that work to changing this country for good is the actualization of this housing agenda. And we are all agreed, Honorable Speaker, including those of us in the opposition. That is why the leader of the opposition, His Excellency Raila Odinga, contends that housing as an agenda is something that this country must actualize because we are 20 years late. If we are to count from the time Raila Odinga was Minister for Housing, I think it's more than 20 years ago. And that tells you what vested interests in government have done, the disservice they have done to our country, Honorable Speaker. It tells you how late we are in actualizing this agenda. 
and it tells us the urgency in enacting this bill today. Having a new housing fund act, honorable speaker, that will create that legal framework to actualize the housing agenda for this great country. Honorable speaker, with those very many remarks, I beg to move and I want to urge all of us, honorable speaker, as we contribute, as we critic, as we add our ideas to what will enrich this bill, honorable speaker, to do it having in mind, honorable speaker, the people back in our villages, the young men and women who patronize your offices almost on a daily basis, the young men and women that you all mobilize for political rallies, the young men and women who you see at your shopping centers stretching out their hands to Muheshimiwa. Give them something that they can be proud of. Something that they can be proud of that when you are their leaders, honorable members, you give them an agenda that gives them opportunities to earn a decent living for themselves besides providing affordable and good housing for the country and helping our country in urbanization and helping to spur economic development in a manner, Honorable Speaker, that will be unrivaled in our region. Honorable Speaker, with those many remarks, I beg to move. And I want to request the Chair Housing, the Honorable Ngeno, to second, uh, uh, since he was part of the team uh, that I commended for having done a very good job uh, through the extensive public participation. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I move. Johanna Ngeno. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, first, I want to thank uh, the Majority Leader for the uh, great presentation while moving this uh, bill. Mr. Speaker, I wish also to rise um, to, as part of the committee, the joint committee that undertook the responsibility of Article 118 of the Constitution to do what the Constitution requires of us, that is the public participation, and especially on a bill that is presented before uh, the House. Mr. Speaker, when this bill was committed to our committee, the Joint Committee of Housing, Urban Planning and Public Works, and also the committee, Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning, we started the responsibility of listening to the people of this republic. Mr. Speaker, we went to several counties and amongst the counties that we visited, Mr. Speaker, was Nairobi County, which has the biggest problem on matters housing, Mr. Speaker. We also visited other counties, Mr. Speaker, which ordinarily people would imagine that they don't need housing, Mr. Speaker, like Turkana, Wajia, and, and Narok and Kajiado, Mr. Speaker. But in all our visits, Mr. Speaker, people want houses. Mr. Speaker, under Article 43B of, this, of our Constitution, Mr. Speaker, obliges the government to ensure that it creates a situation where its citizens access affordable housing, among other recommendations that goes with the affordable housing. Mr. Speaker, it is our responsibility also as a house, as parliament, to ensure that we actualize Article 43 of our constitution. And in that process, Mr. Speaker, we undertook to listen after looking at the bill and listen to the people of this republic. Mr. Speaker, in our findings, when we went around the country, Mr. Speaker, among the many issues which people raised, what that they really want these houses. But how will they access these houses, Mr. Speaker? Equally so that not other people are prejudiced or not other people are disadvantaged. Mr. Speaker, the other question which people raised also, Mr. Speaker, is how do we build these houses? There was a the question of voluntary contribution, Mr. Speaker, among the people we met. There were the questions of 
compulsory or um, voluntary and, and, and of course a contribution that is forced. Mr. Speaker, we also listened to people who talked about how do we levy everybody, Mr. Speaker. Remember when the courts ruled, the courts ruled on the fact that there was no legal framework in place that will ensure the collection of levies was made equal so that it is not discriminatory, it touches on everybody. And these are the questions we also took. These are the questions which most of the members of the public came to ask. How is the levy going to be undertaken? Mr. Speaker, most touching was the areas that we visited, especially the slums of this country, Mr. Speaker. And in the slum areas, Mr. Speaker, people live in deplorable conditions which every Kenyan who think this particular bill of housing is not necessary, you will need to visit those particular areas. I visited those areas myself for the first time in some other areas, for the second time in some other areas, and we realize that people need houses. The only problem is accessing these particular houses. We even visit the Maasai areas where, where, where people wanted houses that are actually the model of Manyatas. We visited Turkana, Mr. Speaker, where people wanted houses, the model of how Turkana live in those houses. We visited areas like Tana River, Mr. Speaker, where we had floods. And people think these houses come in handy to ensure that the people who are affected by floods, they called it cluster, Mr. Speaker, I also accorded the opportunity of having these particular houses. So, Mr. Speaker, I do not want to belabor much on these particular issues, but my submissions, Mr. Speaker, is number one, how do we make these houses accessible? How do we, or how does the government build these houses? Mr. Speaker, on the question of levies, people introduced many other aspects to the collection of levies. Some wanted levies to be collected and, of course, at the end of it, should accrue benefits. Some made proposals to the extent that it should behave like the NSSF model, where after at the end of your retirement, you can still access uh, those, that amount of money. There are so many proposals which people made, Mr. Speaker. And it is upon this House, Mr. Speaker, to make recommendations and in the end, to do amendments on areas where they think fits to be done. Mr. Speaker, in this particular bill, Mr. Speaker, proposes the formation of a board. And in that aspect, Mr. Speaker, many people also were asking, after collection of this money, Mr. Speaker, how is it going to be managed? How is it going to be implemented? How is it going to be fair? Mr. Speaker, there is a proposal for the formation of a board that will have also to be compliant with the Constitution. And among the many proposals, Mr. Speaker, from the members of the public, including also the professionals, they want a board that will actually manage the funds having been collected from, by KRA. And that board should manage the funds, allocate the funds to several categories of houses which are going to be built. And Mr. Speaker, when I say the categories of houses, we have the category of affordable housing, which is the normal housing that we know uh, that are low cost. Another category, Mr. Speaker, are institutional housing. And remember, Mr. Speaker, the police officers, the KDF, the prison warders, and all those people who live in our institutions, I mean who work with our, on our institutions, live on houses that are very deplorable. Among us, the, the, the allocation of these funds, Mr. Speaker, will go towards those particular um, housing, Mr. Speaker. On institutional housing, Mr. Speaker, also, you remember that most of our universities do not have enough money to build hostels. And people or many uh, people propose that we should allocate part of this money to build a hostel so that it can become accessible to our students wherever they are and at a cheaper rate, Mr. Speaker. Among other housing also, Mr. Speaker, which are people who are proposing for allocation of this money, are social housing. These are houses like 
the upgrade of slums, people to move from slums to, to at least good houses through the social housing program. And among us also areas where people thought maybe this money should be allocated are the county governments. The issue of county governments rose in every, every other public meeting we had so that it became uh, apparent that among us, the institutions to be allocated these funds are also county governments. Mr. Speaker, the board also will be given the responsibility because there was another issue where people are asking after allocating this money to other institutions like the NHC, the State Department, the county governments, and all those other agencies, how will the board get back the money? Because this money has to be like a revolving fund. After selling those houses, where does that money go? Will it remain with the NHC? Will it remain with the other agencies? Mr. Speaker, the recommendations which people want is that after these houses have been built and offtake undertaken, the money should revert back to the board, to the fund, so that it can also be used to build other houses. Mr. Speaker, there was also the question of deposit, which is in this bill. Most of the citizens of this country, Mr. Speaker, feel that there are so many people who may not access enough money to pay a deposit of 10%. And Mr. Speaker, we also mulled around it, and the committee felt that the question of deposit should be considered on a case-by-case case, um, situation. Mr. Speaker, people also thought, for example, the houses which are built in Nairobi or houses built in several areas. Mr. Speaker, people feel that how do we protect or how do we ring fence these houses so that it is not bought by only those who have money. Mr. Speaker, so that it can also be accessed by everybody. And, Mr. Speaker, we felt that there should be regulations or regulations should be put in place that will also refund those particular houses to the people of those particular areas. Mr. Speaker, among us, the proposals also which are in this bill and people found it um, uh, acceptable are the provision of loans by the board that even after all this money has been collected, those people who want to buy these houses, Mr. Speaker, and they do not have money they can take a loan from the board so that they can buy these houses and repay the, the the board slowly throughout the years mr speaker lastly there was also the issue of land which arose in most of the cases that the land that this money is going to be utilized on most of them are public land most of them are county land and how then will the public benefit from those particular houses mr speaker and we mulled around it, and of course, we have a section in the Land Act that deals with the conversion of land, if you want, or especially the disposition of land from public land to private land, Mr. Speaker. And we all agreed that we will leave that issue of land to the, to the National Land Commission to deal with it. Mr. Speaker, in general, in general, I'm among us members who sat with the members of the public. I listened to them just like the other members of my committee. And Mr. Speaker, our country, our population, 80% of the population of this country are living in shanties, temporary homes, slums. Others are living on areas where you can't imagine, Mr. Speaker. It is prudent. It is high time. And so many governments, Mr. Speaker, have run away from this responsibility. No government has dared to take the bold step with the president has taken. I also want us as this house to take that bold step to ensure, and, and we have had so many expenditures in this country, Mr. Speaker. I particularly have been in this house for the last 10 years. I've seen budgets go, I've seen budgets being brought to this house. Mr. Speaker, if you go to the villages, there has been so many budgets done in this house and you don't even see them or anything that has been undertaken in those in the budgets which have been allocated here. Mr. Speaker, I, I, I personally felt that let us take this bold step, pass this bill, and wait for the results. And most of us who are sitting in the, in the oversight committees, we will ensure that the projects which have been earmarked under this particular 
this particular uh, bill, Mr. Speaker, will be put into prudent use. There are so many of us who would say, what is the use? So many of us would also say, how assured are we that we are going to build houses? I have always also said, Mr. Speaker, the appropriation of any money is done in this house. The oversight of money allocated to the executive is done by this house. It is our responsibility, Mr. Speaker, we cannot run away from our responsibility. Just because we are lazy, we cannot uh, oversight those monies which have been allocated. So, Mr. Speaker, I eye this house. Our people need houses. Everywhere. We went to Nyanza, we went to Western, we went to Northeastern, we went to Coast, we went to Rift Valley. Everywhere, Mr. Speaker, people need houses. It is our responsibility as a house to ensure that we actualize Article 43 B of that part of the Constitution. The question of whether how that money is going to be spent rests in this house. It rests especially on all of us, regardless of which political divide you come from. Because every money that has been uh, appropriated here depends on us to ensure that it is utilized properly. With those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, I wish to second. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Ngeno. I now propose the question, which is that the Affordable Housing Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 75 of 2023, be now read a second time. Yes, Minority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for having given me the first bite of the cherry. Mr. Speaker, let me start by saying that, uh, of course, this bill is obviously uh, a response, a reaction uh, to now very, very famous High Court ruling of November 2023. We must thank our courts for having the executive to do what they should have done at the first instance. But you must also take cognizance of the fact that even as we debate, the matter is still live in court. It is still lying in the, in, the, in the court of appeal, pending determination. Uh, that notwithstanding, let me make the following comments. That if you look at the if you look at the the bill, the introduction to the bill itself. It states categorically that this is an act that a bill for an act of parliament to give effect to Article 41, 43.1b of the Constitution to provide a framework for access to affordable housing and for connected purposes. The Speaker, from the outset, the question one would want to ask and to ask repeatedly, how, how on earth is this bill once, if, it's a, if it is passed and it becomes law, how is it going to contribute to the realization of the right under Article 43, 1B of the Constitution? Mr. Speaker, it might be important for me to just read the Article 43.1b for the benefit of members yes. who may not have their constitution with them, the copies of the constitution with them. Mr. Speaker, at Article 43.1b, the constitution requires or dictates that every person has the right to accessible and adequate housing. Every person has the right to accessible and adequate housing and to reasonable standards of sanitation. And if you want to understand clearly how this bill is not, is not solving the problem, is not addressing the matter of the realization of the right under Article 43 1B, 
you simply go to the paragraph on at page 2126 of the bill itself. The paragraph dealing with eligibility criteria and application procedure for affordable housing unit. But before I go there, let me now thank the authors of this bill. I wish you could allow Honorable Chunga to listen to me. Let me thank the authors of this bill for having come out now clearly that unlike what we are being told, unlike what was being sold to us through the now infamous Finance Bill 2023, that it is now clear in this bill that whoever is going to contribute to this fund, this housing levy, is not guaranteed a house. That is now clear. That however much you contribute towards the housing levy, whether you are a salaried employee, you are a, you are a Kali artisan, you are a Kukuteni pusher, you are a Boda Boda rider, you are a Mamamboga, there is no guarantee that you will get a house that your contributions are not a guarantee that you will get a house. That's now clear. And if you want to confirm that, you go to the paragraph, paragraph four, on eligibility criteria and application procedure for affordable housing unit. A person qualifies to be allocated an affordable house unit if that person is a Kenyan citizen who is at least 18 years of age and holds a Kenyan identity card. And it goes on. But what is more curious is at paragraph 31, 2, A, an application made under subsection 1 shall be accompanied by proof of requisite deposit approved by the relevant agency of at least 10% of the value of the affordable housing unit being applied for. Now, tell me now. Tell me now. Who in Kenya is going to afford the 10% of the value of the affordable housing unit? Who? Who? What we are simply doing is to create opportunities for the people who are already property, like you and me people who are already wealthy to be able to use proxies to deposit the 10% of the value of those units and acquire as many units as possible. How have you addressed the issue of access to housing under Article 43 1B? Tell me. I need to be educated. Tell me. How? How, Honorable Chunga, my good friend. How? I need to be educated. So, we are simply trying to respond to the queries, the very fundamental queries that were, that, were addressed, that were raised by the High Court. My submission is that this bill does not cure, does not cure the deficiencies that were apparent in the Finance Bill 2023. It does not cure. Mr. Speaker, you must also understand that in this country even those people who may want decent houses to be able to move from their current dwellings the shanties as you call them may not be able to as a result of other competing needs for the little money that they have so what then should have happened? And this is something we have said over and over. We have said as Azimio over and over that we are not opposed to the issue of affordable housing. As a matter of fact, the issue of affordable housing was in our manifesto. The, the point of departure is the implementation. As Azimio, we would have wanted to implement this policy by simply having parliament appropriate money from Kenyan taxpayers' money. Simply collect taxes in a normal manner and appropriate part of that money to go and construct the houses. No doing it. You are simply creating new taxes. 
you are simply creating new taxes earmarked for the housing units. What you are saying, what you are doing is simply overburdening Kenyans to create houses for the benefit of a few of a few of the few select of a select few who are really rich and who have got houses in the first place. Mr. Speaker, you, you go to the implementation. They are saying they will deduct 1.5% of the gross salaries of the employees. Again, that is double taxation. Because already those employees are paying pay as you earn. Why can't you then even go to the net, 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 the net, the net, the net earnings? But more curiously, the employers are being compelled to match, match that 1.5 percent. But it goes when it goes, it, when it comes to those who are not salaried, those who are in the informal sector, who are going to be or go again charge this levy through a means I don't know because I haven't read the report. The report came out too late. I'm told the amendments you are proposing. How you will raise this money from those who are not earning salaries? It is not clear who will match for them. It's not clear. For the employees like us and you, at least our employer, the PSC, the, the speaker is here, uh, will, will match. <laughs> yes. But for the Mahamboga, who will match for the Mahamboga, Mr. Speaker? Who will match the contribution for the Boda Boda rider? Who? So we are having two different standards, which was raised by the High Court itself. And I'm being careful not to delve into the matters which are preventing before the court. Because that would be totally subjudicial. Mr. Speaker, you can go on and on and on. The High Court raised the issue of Article 10, Sub Article 2 of the Constitution on national values, especially the matter of participation of the people. I've, been to, I've, I've heard my friend Johanna Ngenu eloquently say that he went to Kisumu, he went to uh, Nakuru, he went to Garesa, and people were happy. People were welcoming them with the claps and cheers <laughs> that they want houses. <laughs> they were singing, Hosanna, Hosanna. <laughs> the houses have arrived, <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I didn't see them also. In my own county of Zia, I didn't see them. I didn't see them, Mr. Speaker. In my own constituency of Ogonja, I didn't see them. So, how was this public participation conducted? <laughs> to be able to satisfy the very rigorous requirement under Article 10, Sub Article 2 of the Constitution. How? And remember, there was also a court ruling earlier on the issue of public participation. When the court declared our public participation notice as unconstitutional. Okay? You need to learn law, some law, for you to understand that honorable uh, buyer, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it has not been demonstrated how this public participation was effective. Okay? Finally, Mr. Speaker, because I want to 